Hey guys, so this is a video that um, hopefully will help you with the algebra when you're doing combined gas law problems. So um, remember the combined gas law is P1V1 over N1T1 equals P2V2 over N2T2. So in general, what you want to do is first thing when you come to a combined gas law problem is you read the problem, figure out what's not changing. And if it doesn't changing, um, the way you know it's not changing is if, first of all, nothing at all is said about that variable in the problem. If not a word is said about the number of moles, then n is constant, even though nothing's said about it. Or you could be told that that variable is held constant. Okay, so once you do cross off every variable that does not change, what that means is get rid of it, take it out of the equation, throw it out, you don't need it. Um, next, whatever you're being asked to find, get that variable to the side of the equal sign so that it is in the numerator and move everything else to the other side of the equal sign. So remember, whenever you move any variable across an equal sign, um, if it was in the numerator, the top, then it ends up in the denominator on the other side. If it was in the denominator, um, then it ends up in the numerator, the top, on the other side. If it was in the bottom, it ends up in the top when you move it across the equal sign. Um, so if what you're looking for, the variable you're asked to find, is already in the top on one side, leave it there and just move everything else over. But if the variable that you are looking for is in the bottom, in the denominator, then what you do is move it to the other side of the equal sign, because that puts it in the top, and then move everything that's on the same side back over to the other side, so that what you're looking for always has to be in the numerator and by itself. And when you cross the equal sign, everything flips, top to bottom, bottom to top. So for example, let's see, say we're doing some combined gas law problem, and we know that we're told or we're told nothing about or are told that P and N are constant. And we want to find T2. Okay, So step one says get rid of everything that's constant. So we're going to take both of the P's, P1 and P2, let's get rid of them. Cross them off. Throw them out. Just like that. And now what we have left is our, a simplified equation, which is the one that we want to use to do our calculations. So that's, that's all there is to step one. Let's move on to step two. Step two, we want to find T2. Well, in our example here, it is in the denominator, in the bottom on one side. So we know it has to be in the top. So what we do is we move it to the other side of the equal sign, and that puts it in the numerator. But we have all this other stuff here that's still on the same side. We have to get the variable we're looking for, in this case t2, by itself. So we move everything that's still here to the other side, and it switches bottom to top, top to bottom. So v1 ends up on the bottom here. t1 ends up on the top on the other side. And now we have our rearranged equation. All we have to do is plug everything in, and we'll get our answer. Easy. So let's do another, let's look at another scenario here, guys. Let's suppose everything changes. This isn't the most complicated possible combined gas law problem there is, really. Nothing's held constant, and we're asked to solve for, let's say, N2 right here. So step one says get rid of everything that doesn't change. Well, <laughs> there it is. Nothing changed, so we still, still have the complete combined gas law. Next, step two, we want to get N2 by itself. Well, again, it's in the numer uh, denominator here, so first thing we're going to do is move it across the equal sign so that it ends up in the top. Now, everything that's still over here has to move across the equal sign to, to get what the N2 be by itself, and that means when we move everything here across the equal sign, it switches top to bottom, bottom to top. So P1 and V1 both end up down here in the denominator, N1 and T1 both end up here in the numerator. Oops, and so what we have is our rearranged equation. We've solved it for N2, easy as that. And all we have to do is plug in and we'll get our answer. Um, real quick before I go, one last word on units, okay? So P and V, well first N is always moles, period. Um, but P and V can be in any units as long as they're in the same units for ones and twos. That means if P1 is in um, Tor, then and P2 is in Tor, you can just leave them as they are. If V1 is in milliliters and V2 is in milliliters, just leave them as they are. However, this is where sometimes people get caught. Temperature must be in Kelvin for the calculations. 
even if you're given the temp temperature in Celsius, asked to find, let's say, T2 in Celsius, you still have to convert to Kelvin to do the calculations and then convert back if you have to. Well, that's algebra for the combined gas law problems, and that's all there is to it, guys.